We all know that David Bowie is a bit strange. We know that his music, his sound, what he's been able to offer to the rock community, if taken away, easily neuters a lot of what we enjoy today. He explored sounds, melodies, structures, ideas that really for the time that they were manifested were ones that were taboo that then became part of our society. He challenged himself and also challenged his listeners constantly, and the response was one of respect. And he still, at its barest of points, was able to create and craft instantly recognizable pop songs, or rock songs, whatever that you wish to distinguish them as. With The Next Day, which was Bowie's last record a couple of years back, we felt like we were the ones that were getting neutered a little bit. This you know, older Bowie that seemed to be kind of tight-roping the lines of convention and staying on the side that was a bit safe. It was still a very good album. It still had plenty to offer a listener. And for the record, I think it gets a bad rap. But we were looking for something a little more from Bowie. We were hoping that he would challenge himself to really craft something out there. And then we get Black Star. We open the gate to 2016, and this... A psychedelic masterpiece is the first thing that we see on the other side. I say masterpiece right there out of the gate simply because this is a disc that would fit into the catalogs of the avant-garde listeners, you know, playlist, their love, while also still being an extremely uh, approachable album to a rock fan or really a David Bowie fan. This is easily his most challenging work, the one that has the most evolution, really just sort of dripped within it. Take a look at the opener. Just take a look at Black Star itself as a song in your 10-minute opener that really has enough symbology and just uniquity to it where you're unsure 100% of what it all means. There are questions that you have at the end of this song and really during it as well. The music video does not help to solve any of those questions. The real context of its meaning is one that has a lot of theory that's swirling around it and once again, that critical thinking point has drawn David Bowie into this pantheon of songwriters that are able to very, you know, very subtly craft and create a legitimate musical mystery. Is it something that includes Major Tom going to a new land? Is this a parody or a conversation about religion? Is it about ISIS? There's been talks and reports that the song is actually all about ISIS. Whatever it may be, Black Star is one that shines based around its strangeness. It's one where it feels at times completely out of tune. Out in, it seems that there are places where everything just doesn't mold together correctly, but this actually is what helps to craft, create, and build. It world builds its mystery and its kind of mystique. It's one that builds that mystique through these... Things that traditionally in music you would see as inadequacies, either that or faults. But instead, these faults and inadequacies build something grand. Moving right on to Tis a Pity, She Was a Whore, we see kind of the converse of that. That has a little bit more of a tailored structure. And we hear David Bowie using a higher pitched voice uh, for portions of the chorus of this track, if you really wish to call it that. And it sounds, again, like it's a struggle-filled campaign. It's one that seems like he's going above and beyond what his voice at 69 years old, as of today, the day of release, was really called to do. But once again, upon further re-listening, you start to realize that this is the only and the best way for the vocal line to really progress in this song. It builds a crescendo that is satisfying, and whenever you try to sample in your head any potential musical counter-argument, one does not come. And it's one that works. And then you move into Lazarus. A softer, more melodious part, and you start to realize something once you reach this point. This very easily could have been an album where Black Star was the anomaly. It was the weirdo outsider that was David trying once more to dive into the weird, the strange, the psychedelic, to push his listeners, to challenge his listeners one final time, but instead of it being just the one track, you start to realize that the entire album is meant to be that challenge. 
the Ice Bucket Challenge, the Cinnamon Challenge, whatever it may be, this is the Black Star Challenge. And it's a challenge to take, and it's a challenge to be marveled by. The subtle hints, the subtle musical shifts that you hear on the remaining tracks of this disc, some of the strangeties that you encounter with lyricism, you know, where the fuck is Monday gone? It makes you really start to examine some of the different elements of what's around you, whether it be on a musical context or whether it be just simply on a lifestyle complex. You start to wonder what was going around and what was swirling within David's head whenever this was happening. The entire disc, some folks happen to call it Jazztronica, which I don't know where the hell they got that, but there is certainly a grand amount of freeform jazz that is implicated within this album, included within this album, and it combines very nicely with the sort of dissonant subtlety that you get through the rock side, through the through the, the guitar that you hear, or, or the melody that is built, whether it be real or artificial. It just has this strange, strange beauty to it. It's odd to listen to the next day after listening to Black Star because they sound literally like two completely different artists. It sounds very much more like an artist that's deciding after three or four albums of doing the same thing to break away and try something brand new as opposed to an artist who's now released more than 20 albums and has now decided to challenge his listeners yet again to instead go into a direction that perhaps could awaken a brand new personality, a brand new persona within David Bowie himself. He is now the Black Star. You can consider this if this continues to be the Black Star era, the start of something brand new, radically different. And let me tell you something. If this is what we have to look forward to from the late 60s, early 70s, you know, age of David Bowie, as far as music is concerned, bring it on, because these challenging works are lovely. It's almost as though taking on this project, this concept, reinvigorated his pen, and looking at a little different side of what music offers gave him the inspiration required in order to produce something that felt, that feels as unique as this does. You know, we speak in whenever we talk about a lot of heavy metal albums about the uniquity of some records, of how they're able to combine several different elements of music, maybe not just heavy metal, in order to craft something that feels incredibly fresh, but at the same time also very listenable. Yeah, avant-garde albums sometimes lack that secondary portion to a wide swath of individuals, but to those who love it, to those that it is pleasing to, it's something that feels so unique and off the rails, off the charts, that it's almost like having your own little musical taboo. Black Star, I feel, is going to be a musical taboo for a lot of young listeners, aggressive listeners, ones that are willing to explore, and ones that are willing to accept. For those that are familiar with Bowie, this will come as a surprise, while also not seeming like a surprise. It will instead feel like a gift has been given to us. A gift by our king has been bestowed. That once again he has decided to don the bizarre robe that makes David Bowie a legend among classic rock stars. I can't give everything away as a final track. Just the title alone grants a subtle allowance toward what David Bowie has really been throughout all these years. You know, this is easily an album that maybe could have came to him during this period where he was sort of relaxed and doing albums that were a bit more conventional, but instead, instead of giving everything away, he has something to save for us. He has something to give to us before he finally takes his final bow. This is a terrific disc. It's one that really challenges the listener as intended. And it's a challenge that is not only acceptable, but it's one that should be taken. 91 out of 100. My only complaint is I wish there was more. But I think that this subtle balance and seven tracks, you know, with about a 45 minute or so runtime, maybe a little longer, was a pretty good decision. It doesn't overstay its welcome. But I want to know what you think about Black Star by David Bowie, because I know a lot of you have listened to this. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. 
And if this isn't an album that you find to be all of that great, tell me a Bowie album that you think is fantastic. Or tell me a Bowie album that you feel that really could have used the same invigorative spark that it feels like Black Star has. What are some of your favorite tracks off of this disc? What didn't you like from it? I'm Cover Killer Nation. Let me know in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys later.